India, home to a huge population that keeps on growing and growing. As the population grows, so do the challenges. Clean food, clean water, affordable health care, pollution. The list of challenges is a long and daunting one. But in this constant tug of war for resources, we need to stop for a moment and think. Think of ideas, think of solutions, think of how to build a more secure future. And that's exactly what we did in 2013. We took the first step towards unleashing the power of Shunya through science. In keeping with India's legacy of knowledge and problem solving, we travel the length and breadth of the country to find 21st century Aryabhats, innovators who showed us how science can be tapped to achieve zero. Zero waste, zero emissions, zero hunger, zero devastation. This year we're back and we're asking the same probing questions, but we're looking for newer and better solutions to help us achieve our goal of Shunya. I'm Manvi Dhillon and you're watching DuPont Presents Part of Shunya Quest for Zero. The theme of Shunya integrates pretty well with what our technology is able to achieve. Uh, as because of this smart distribution technology, we're able to ensure zero power theft, zero defaults, zero power cuts, as well as zero carbon emissions. Any technology has to move towards zero pollution. And the aim of Project Surya is to move in that direction, move in the direction of zero pollution by, in a, in a stepwise manner. One of the motivation for us is to revolutionize the Indian dairy industry by achieving zero pollution and zero spoilage of milk. What are the resources? Water, electricity, soil, time, labor. By installing Nano Ganesh, uh, basically we are making all vestiges of resources zero. There's nothing more important than the air we breathe. Last year, India ranked absolutely last in a global study on air quality. This year, not only do we still have the worst air quality, but India has slipped 32 ranks in the World Health Organization Global Environment Report Index to a low 155. Pollution levels are at an all-time high in our cities, in our water, in the air we breathe. It's critical we tackle this challenge immediately. Well, this is the part of Shunya quest for zero. And today we kick off a quest for zero pollution. What are the challenges? What are the risks? Why is pollution not taking center stage in India? What will our future look like if we don't tackle pollution urgently? We turn to Sunita Narayan for some answers. Sunita Narayan is a writer and an environmentalist who uses knowledge for change. We meet her at the Center for Science and Environment in New Delhi, where she is the Director General. I'm going to throw a, an idealistic proposition mm -hmm. at you, and I'd like you to comment on it. Can you imagine a future where each of us, individuals, where every business, big and small, is truly a champion of the environment, the way you define champions of the environment? No, I think you've well put it. It's about the way I would like it, because I do think that environment today has become a big issue. Um, everyone says they're an environmentalist, but I think what we are really looking at, what is the way in which we can actually be environmentalists to reduce our footprint on Earth? What kind of ideas do we need? What kind of paradigm of growth do we need that we can actually make sure that we tread lightly on Earth, that there is enough on this Earth for everyone's needs, but not for their greeds, and we can make sure that the poorest person on Earth also has access to resources. Simplistic, but I'll ask it. Mm -hmm. If you had to pick 
three of the most terrifying pollutants today. What would you put on that list? You know, I, I think there are three big issues that we need to think about. And we need to think about them in a way that is imaginative, inventive, crazy, so that we can find answers. One, obviously the issue of climate change. It is staring us in the face today. We know that human beings have over polluted the Earth's atmosphere. We know that it is because of our development that we emit carbon dioxide today, which is today creating kind of hazards which could actually make it a catastrophe. I mean, we are seeing in India, monsoons are being affected. The second to me is water. Now, water in India is a lot more basic because when you're looking at the pollution in water, it's about biodegradable waste. It's really about excreta. Yes. And so the big, and the, but it's not small because that polluted water today kills more babies in India than anything else. And that's criminal. Yes. So clearly that's the second big one. And the third one is obviously air pollution, which is linked to the way we drive, linked to the way we build our cities. When you're outdoors, especially on a busy street, you worry about pollution. You can feel it, you can smell it. But the moment you step indoors into an air-conditioned environment, you feel safe, protected from pollution. Most of us spend at least half a day indoors in a centrally air-conditioned environment. But India, unlike many other countries, does not enforce any regulations around indoor air pollution. And so, pollutants run absolutely free. Twelve hours, that's 720 minutes, or 43,200 seconds. That's the time spent by an average Indian in an air-conditioned office. India has no enforceable norms on indoor air quality. Ducts of air conditioners accumulate dust, and are breeding grounds for bacteria if they're not cleaned. Health issues like asthma and respiratory diseases are a result of bad indoor air quality. The reality is grim, but can we harness science and technology to minimize air pollution and make our indoor environment more safe? Well, we're going to introduce you to a company that's doing just that. Step into the world of Fahad Azad, the enterprising innovator of the Ductbot. Fahad's world has elements of a science fiction movie. What with all the drones buzzing around? It was Fahad Azad's passion for tinkering with toys and a very real necessity for cleaning hard to reach AC ducts of air conditioners, which are breeding grounds for germs and dust, that led to the idea of the duct bot. So here we are, Fahad. You're holding the duct bot in your hand. To everyone who's watching, what is the duct bot? So it's a robot which cleans uh, centralized air conditioners. So you have air conditioners in hotels, you have air conditioning systems in uh, operation theatres, you have air conditioning system in submarines. So when they're used, a lot of dust is accumulated inside. And they're installed in a building or an infrastructure which cannot be dismantled to clean. So it's very difficult to access these ducts. So you use the duct robot to send, uh, send it inside and clean it uh, without dismantling the entire facility. The duct bot comes with the power box, PS2 remote, the LCD display monitor, and air whip tentacles. You know, this is the starting point. This is a duct. Is this a typical duct? Is that why the duct bot becomes so important? Yeah, this is the smallest duct you'll find in ceilings, which is 6 inches by 12 inches in size. And there are bigger dots, so in bigger dots you don't have any problem. So the machine has to be as small as possible, which could fit inside the most smallest duct available. That's why everything has to be very compact. And then you need to mount cleaning equipment on top, which should not interfere at the top as well. So everything should fit inside this package. Okay, so we've got all the parts here. Just run us through them and then we'll get a sense of how the parts come together and do the job of cleaning. Yeah. So the most important part which uh, helps the user kind of clean the duct is the camera over here, which is 
a very small pinhole camera mm -hmm. and then the lights to illuminate the ducts these are led lights so they don't get very hot uh, inside the ducts if you use a halogen bulb it might actually cause fire and as the duct is very small you can see it's very difficult to kind of turn around and then come back so it's easier for us to kind of mount a second camera behind mm -hmm. so you just switch the camera and you have another light for the camera as well to drive in completely reverse direction you have on top is the air whip which is being carried by the robot and uh, you pass high pressure air and this moves inside the duct loosens, loosens all the loosens dust particles uh, and then it also pushes pushes them out them out at the other end incubated in this small but committed tech startup with every nut and bolt engineered to perfection The duct bot is in use commercially in India. And giving wings to Fahad's creation is Sohail Parikar, the man who provides air conditioning services to his clients. It's time to see the duct bot in action. We're here at a site which requires cleaning of the air conditioning ducts. So what have we got in front of us and how do we get the process started? Well, the first process is we're going to put the duct bot in to check how good or bad the duct system is. Uh, you can see this the tool has already been mounted. This is what we're going to use to agitate the dust inside. And I'll just explain to you, from the other side, we're going to suck out the dust which it agitates. And we've got a filtration box lying right, right there, which is going to filter the dust at the exhaust. So what we remove from top doesn't further contaminate the building or where we're standing. This is now the duct bot going into the AC ducts, then what happens? Well, you've got this gentleman sitting here who's going to monitor the movement of the duct board and see how bad or good the duct is. And as you can see, there's a lot of dust in the system. So we have taken a call now. The ducts need to be clean, visually dirty. I don't need to do special tests. You can see it, it's there. And that's what the duct board allows you to do. It's your eyes inside the duct. I, that dust will, because of the air pressure, will be go towards that direction. It will get collected through the filtration box and out back into this area, all clean and neat. A simple step forward in technology, which aims to make the air you breathe a little less polluted. The duct bot is steering India towards zero indoor air pollution. The duct bot is capable of uh, achieving zero air pollution. Uh, provided the client uses that uh, discipline every day regularly uh, to clean their ducts and if that is used uh, regularly in regular intervals it will uh, maintain shunya air pollution in indoor environment man we take any example and you will find all science that impacts the environment sunita narayan tells us more about how and when it needs to happen a country like India is essentially finding today at a, itself at a loss because we, have in, we, we believe that the environmental management is to be done after the pollution, you come in to clean up. But environmental integrity is really, in my view, the power of Shunya, which is that you would find ways, methods, um, um, lifestyles in which you would actually not first create the problem and then clean up. You would make sure that you would have affordable solutions so that everybody has the right to clean water, the right to sanitation, everybody has the right to basic amenities. Today, if at all, we are adopting such a capital resource intensive system that it creates inequity and it creates waste. And then we spend all our lives chasing that waste, trying to clean up, but we can never clean it up. Shunya at the starting point, that's what you're saying. Absolutely. Put that goal of Shunya before you take the first step in building your home, in building your office, in building your factory, in conducting any activity. Very well put. Shunya at the beginning, at the heart of it. Not Shunya after, as an afterthought. But Shunya is the power which allows you to reinvent so that you can absolutely think differently. I keep saying, we talk about thinking outside the box, think without a box. Think Shunya. Sunita Narayan, as always, thank you for provoking us to think diff differently, for challenging the status quo. As always, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much, Manvi. Thank you very much. 
We've seen how Robosoft Systems is harnessing the power of technology to make the air we breathe a little less polluted. We hope we've challenged you to rethink some of the little activities that we do every day that harm our environment. Really, collective action is the only solution. Well, that's it on this edition of The Power of Shunya Quest for Zero, a show that celebrates science and innovation, technologies that can secure our future, human ingenuity that can reduce our challenges to zero. Till next week then, goodbye. Thank you.